You probably weren't expecting to see a video like this on my channel, but I just feel like I have to get and address the incompetence and the unacceptable, how unacceptable VAR is. Right, I've done some research and I've found many situations where VAR has to take account of all of these decisions which are just unacceptable. The first one was on Saturday where Luis Diaz offside that is clear and obviously onside we can see it with our own eyes i'm i'm not a liverpool fan i'm an arsenal fan you could say that it was because it was against tottenham but no many fans have been coming out about this statement and this situation which is completely unacceptable that's completely on site, the VAR, the referee has the VAR in their mic. They came to the decision that it was on side, but they didn't tell the referee. That is so much incompetence. How can you not? T he's they're listening to him in. They're all talking to each other in the same ear. How have they come to the decision and the referee has not heard it? Is he deaf or something? Like. It's clearly, we can see with our own eyes. It, it's, it's just unacceptable. They, and Liverpool have released a statement about this, which I think is just perfect. Uh, and I think is, I think, I think they have all the rights to do this. I don't get why all these people, Gary Neville, you know, the Sky Sports people and, like, the Ref Watch are coming out and saying that it's unacceptable and to get on with it. That decision could cost something. Liverpool lost the league by one point. And, yeah, if, if they go on to lose, to, to something significant happens and they lose by one or two points, that is going to be the decision blamed for it. So... I complete. I th I think that teams like Arsenal, Brighton, all of these teams that have encountered these terrible decisions, should all come together and sue the PGMOL, who are just coming out with apologies. Which uh, they they they're not going to solve anything, are they? Arsenal robbed of two points last season. Liverpool robbed of points. Brighton were robbed of points against Tottenham. Wolves should have got a pen. That's a clear penalty. He's absolutely he's hammered the other guy. VAR just not looking at it. It's like we've not even got VAR. It's not even helping. If you don't know how to use VAR, there's no point in using it, right? Like before, there was there was nothing wrong with all this. Like we we had no nothing this controversial before VAR came in. It was supposed to bring, like, help the referees, like, give him an extra pair of eyes. But it's just, it's just added another level of incompetence onto the refereeing. And it's just completely and utterly unacceptable. Right, the second situation, which I think a lot of people will be fond of from last season. Brentford's goal was offside. It wasn't as clear as the Luis Diaz one, but still, if you can draw the lines, you can you can tell that that was clearly offside. Now, the VAR, Lee Mason, drew the wrong lines on the screen. I think that, that denied Arsenal two points. It wasn't anything significant, but it could have drastically changed their season, especially... When they had a game against Man City the next week, could have, could have changed the mood a lot. And if Arsenal had only lost that that season by one or two points, that would have been the decision to blame for it. Another situation we have. There's there's so many apologies from the PGMO that there's been about ten in the last year. It's ridiculous. But yeah, we've got Brighton versus Tottenham. There was a penalty. There was no penalty awarded to Brighton where it was a clear and 
clear penalty, clear and obvious. I don't know how they've not overturned it. Another one, which was Man United against Wolves. Onana punched the... I don't know. He, he completely missed the ball and he took out the Wolves player. If that's not a clear and obvious error by the referee, then what is? However, this decision was apologised and it was... This There was another decision that was overturned by VAR wrongly and was, you know, issued an apology statement, which was uh, Man Manchester United 3, Arsenal 1. Another Arsenal decision. You, you may think I'm biased, but there's... There's... There's two. I've 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 got the statement list that they've. There's two apologies for Arsenal, two apologies against Spurs. You can't you can't be calling you can't be calling me biased. <laughs> Please. Please, I mean Man United. Yeah, that Onana was ridiculous. Last season at the start, Arsenal against Man United. Uh, they they Gabriel Martinelli scored, which would have put Arsenal one 0 in front, which could have drastically changed the momentum of the match. Could have costed Arsenal three points. Again, like that that season could have costed Arsenal like cost Arsenal five points. Those terrible decisions, basically. And uh, Odegaard was given a, penalized for a foul on Casemiro, where he clearly got the ball. Like, what is this? Anyways, that will conclude the video. There's so much I could have talked about in this that I missed out. Um, there's. There's that the one for West Ham against Chelsea where Jaron Bowen got fouled. There's apparently there was one where Lucas Digne scored a free kick, but Man United wall was further further back than it should have been, which was the, with the referee's fault. So um, yeah, just I think just get VAR out if you don't know how to use it. I think I think VAR is a great addition. I actually do. But if you can't use VAR properly, then don't use it. The people that are there clearly can't use VAR correctly because they look at the, the, the decisions about 10 times. However, the people at home can look at it once and tell that there's a decision. They have all the slow-mo, all the lines, everything, all the technology. But all it would take was one person at home looking at their TV screen and they can get a better decision out. Ridiculous.